Good morning, folks. How are we doing? Let's see if we are actually recording. I think we are. We are. A little red dot doesn't pop up down here. Hi. Uh, today is the 27th day of November, 2023. It's bright and early at 7.53 in the morning, Tampa, Florida. Uh, welcome to the IDF's version of the MCU, the Empowerment Zone of Warfare. Yes, indeed, boys and girls. Uh, a first. It's a first. It's a first in all westernized warfare. A fully, three uh, fully female crews running tanks saved the day, saved all of humanity from the evil Muslims on October the 7th <laughs> by running people over with the tanks, by cruising as fast as they could down highways in Israel, um, by firing on kibbutzes uh, and fucking strafing and, and, and sweeping uh, the tree lines with people in them uh, with heavy machine gun fire. <laughs> yes, they saved the day and they've proven to the world that girl power rules. Girls rule and boys drool. That's the story coming out of Israel this week. Um, do you guys remember when the IDF got uh, Channel 24 and their reporter to come down there uh, near, I guess, the, the same kibbutz and uh, tell the story of the uh, 40 beheaded babies? Remember that? And... Uh, they brought in the news person, and she dutifully did her job. They had a bunch of IDF soldiers all standing around. And the wag the dog fucking producers and directors were running around beforehand going, Okay, everyone, you just saw puppies getting fucking skinned alive by the orcs. You just saw babies being beheaded and uh, grandmothers being raped and whatever. Whatever that you so you you're sad. Be sad. Just be standing sad, and occasionally reach over and comfort each other. <laughs> they did that, and then they went action. And the lady from the twenty four channel twenty four said, "I don't know who told me, but forty beheaded babies. It's awful. It's the worst thing ever." And of course, all these IDF soldiers are standing around doing the propaganda shoot. <laughs> By deception, thou shalt make war. Um, there's another video out. It's a woman by herself. Uh, and she's just sitting there telling a story. She's telling a story that came to her, not secondhand, but thirdhand. Her friend heard from her friend about something somebody saw. Um... And she tells this story where this woman heard from a woman who heard from uh, the person who was hiding uh, when a bunch of orcs uh, gang raped uh, a friend of hers while she was hiding. And then, of course, they tortured her for no reason uh, when they were done and killed her. Then, according to the story, second hand, third hand, um, for some reason one of them decided to cut off her breast, and then according to the story, they all played with her breast out in the street. <laughs> she doesn't mention it, but the person telling the story in the video, and it's just a straight shot of her telling the story, they make sure that we focus on and then pan up her IDF dog tag hanging outside of her shirt. <laughs> and now we have the girl boss story. <laughs> IDF um, is famous for, oh yeah, I forgot, uh, dude doing the uh, the reveal, the big reveal of the 
five fucking bags that any IDF soldier could have carried him to the hotel, to the hotel, to the hospital. Uh, the big reveal that, you know, it was being used for terrorist purposes, putting, which is apparently a, a an active fucking room for uh, MRI machine, big MRI machine there. One was broken down in another room. But the one, the first one they go to, it's clearly still being in use. It's still in use. And for some, somehow or another, they had a bag behind it full of ammunition, magazines, and an AK-47. All of which, by the way, are made of metal. And they were sitting directly behind the MRI machine. Which, by the way, that's not going to ever work. Um, that's going to fuck up the images. It's also going to fuck up the machine. and probably will fuck up anybody in there once they turn that thing on and start spinning. Those huge, massive electromagnets right next to a bag full of fucking metal. So, but the, the, the IDF is doing their level best to spin the bullshit, to lie incessantly. I mean, incessantly lie. <laughs> and this is yet another one. <laughs> Turns out there are reports now from Harats and other places uh, that, yes, indeed, uh, tanks open fire shells into buildings, into residential buildings at the kibbutz and other places um, that killed uh, Israeli civilians. And so, while this is now coming out, and while there's, the ceasefire is probably going to be extended, there's a bunch of talk about that now, just what Bibi Netanyahu and the fucking Likudniks did not want. They understand that there's going to be hell to pay for killing Israeli civilians and then trying to blame those deaths on Palestinians. Of course, they don't really care about blaming those deaths on the Palestinians in Israel. Some do. Most in power don't. <laughs> but they do care about killing civilians. They do care a lot about killing Israelis. They, 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 they tend to get a little pissed off about that. So as you're going to see in this video I'm going to show you, um, there, there, there are a lot of fucking things going on with this. Um, with this piece of propaganda. It's much better written than the one from I-24. This is I, uh, something 12, K-12 or whatever it is in Israel. Uh, and they did this whole big piece, but it was carefully fucking written. All the statements from the fucking IDF actresses, I mean, I'm sorry, tank team. Um, all of their lines are very carefully scripted. Con in including the part where um, they say, oh yeah, I was told by a soldier it didn't matter if I fired tanks, shells into the building. But I chose not to. Because there are Israeli, Israeli civilians in there. But I did give the order to my machine gunner to open up a 50 caliber machine gun and just level the place with the machine gun rounds. And that's okay. By the way, 50 caliber machine guns blow right through cinder block. They just, boom, like it's not even fucking there. And who knows what they, uh, they're probably using depleted uranium rounds. Who the fuck knows what they're using in those goddamn things. <laughs> now, right after she says that, that's one tank commander. There were three tank crews. A according to the story, all three were girl power. 20-year-olds, 19-year-olds. In charge of... $10 million, $15 million fucking equipment um, in Israel. Not even in fucking some foreign white country, but in Israel. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> there were three. The commander of all three, the immediate, immediately after she said that, says that, the commander of all three says yes, and of course uh, they open fire with shells and uh, machine guns on the community 
it was confusing, uh, but it had to happen to save lives. So he contradicts what she said right after she said it. Um, now, this is how carefully scripted it all is. There's, there's justification. <laughs> so you have, uh, they also said, made a point to say, oh yeah, we've never been in that fucking APV or whatever the fuck she called it, tank. We've never been trained on it. So, so if you've never been trained on that fucking tank, why did they say, hey, you four, jump in that bad boy? We, uh, we do fucking um, um, ordering and stuff like that. We don't jump on in there. Head on down there. Okay. They clearly come right out and say, we'd never been, we had no idea how to use the equipment. But we figured it out. Girl power. My article on my website asks the question, um, is this a, <laughs> what, did I, what did I say? How did I put it? It's funny. Hang on a second. Girl power. Is this the, is it, is it the new MCU identity politics? Or are these the future idea fall gals? And that brings up a very interesting question. Are they going to say, okay, yeah, they were fucking green. Yeah, they were fucking girls. Yeah, they were fucking 19 years old. All three crews, by the way. All three crews. Somehow or another, they just had nothing but women to put in these fucking tanks. All three crews. And apparently none of them knew how to fucking use them. <laughs> but they somehow drove them quite a ways, running people over on the way to get there. Um, are they doing this so that they can, when it's obvious gonna, 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 obviously going to come out, now that this thing is, they're going to extend, Hamas is going to release 10 more hostages every day, and this fucking ceasefire is going to extend, and the justification for wiping out Hamas and all that, the blood, the, 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 um, the heyday of the blood is going to grow tame. BB understands this. Without another goddamn false flag, the heyday in the blood's going to grow tame in fucking Israel, and the the taste for more baby blood, more Palestinian baby blood, uh, they're going to lose it. It's going to become kind of bitter to them. If they go a full week under ceasefire. The people of Israel are not going to fucking, okay, BB says we just got to start bombing the shit out of them again for no apparent reason. You know, 8,000 dead children aren't, aren't enough, I guess. <laughs> for the one poster child, blonde haired blue-eyed Israeli one girl, child, who was killed in one of these kibbutz. Uh, oh my God, we killed 8,000 of your brown hair, brown-eyed fucking kids. Because you killed one of our fucking blonde haired, blue eyed little girls. How dare you? Turns out the blonde haired, blue eyed little girl was killed by one of the MCU tanks, according to eyewitnesses. And if you think about it, really, according to this fucking news report, where the fucking commander says, yeah, they fired shells, they fired. Uh, M50, uh, M50 caliber machine gun rounds into the community. It was confusing. They're making ready for something. So there's there's that element to it. There's going to be a, they're, they're building in a kind of excuse. But then they're also doing the identity politics thing. They're saying, yeah, but but as the last quarter of this fucking video says, delves into, this is the first time all female crew in the tank. That's never happened before. And we did it not once, not twice, but three times to save all humanity from the orcs. <laughs> That's going to be like, okay, so now they're, they're lionizing them. Yay, they're heroes. It's girl power. 
it's the it's 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 the uh, empowerment zone. You don't want to take that away from the girls, do you? You don't want to start talking about the tanks killing Israeli civilians. What about the girl power? This is literally what they're doing. This is how this is how twisted. This is how they fucking think. This is how they fucking think. These propagandists working for the IDF always covering up their fucking shit. It's 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 probably as, as full a time a job as trying to cover up for the for the for the U.S. military's fucking shit. We're always getting into, or better it's better still, the politicians' shit and all that fucking shit they're getting into. Mister Pelosi, let me show you a little bit of this, and I'll hit you with some more news. And, uh, of course, all of this stuff, because I'm consolidating stuff, I'm taking stuff, I'm putting clips, quick, quick clips of it, uh, short little paragraphs of it, two paragraphs of it, on my website, and linking back to the original source. So that's where you'll find all of this stuff, okay? I'm not being lazy, I'm just being fucking lazy. That he who is without fucking sin cast the first stone. Here's my article on this, and, and uh, I've, I've taken some screenshots. You can watch the video yourself. I'm sure it will be claimed if I play any of it. I don't care if it's claimed, but they'll probably shut it down. <laughs> Here's a screenshot. It's Keshet 12 News. Here's a screenshot of one of them saying, uh, none of us were trained to operate this APV. Hey, we had no idea what we were doing. Somehow or another, we were able to do it. Now, she's also the one who gets all butch at the end of it and says, ah, we were, they're animals, they're not humans. So, even if we believe, now, of course, this is also a possibility. These are IDF per people who were brought in and told to lie. This is your job now. You're going to lie to save the IDF. Because you've got some tank commanders and crews who are going to get in a lot of fucking trouble. But we're going to go with that girl power empowerment zone thing. It's going to help girls. It's going to help girls, young girls who want to, I want to be just like her. I want to kill, run over fucking the orcs with a tank. Mm. It's it, This is great. And it'll help Israel. This is what you've got to do. This is your patriotic duty to do this shit. So it's possible that this whole fucking girl power tank crew thing is just bullshit. It's, and of course they got the fucking reporters to ride in it and, and, and they were driving supposedly. But of course we know reporters will do anything for, you know, to, to, to make them, to, 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 to get up the fucking corporate ladder and end up with one of those cushy jobs in the air conditioned studio where everyone's pampering you. So, who knows what the fuck happened? Who knows who who was driving those tanks? So that's a possibility as well. Um, but she's the one who's all butch. Yeah, we were running over those orcs. They're not even humans, is what she says. I, orcs, I keep talking about that because some fucking politician said that in Israel. But she definitely says they're not human. And they were happily running them over on the way, according to her. I want to ask you something. Uh, if you're, it's it's not dark, and you're on high alert, you're in another country, and you're attacking the idea. Um, tanks make noise. <laughs> How does this slow moving bum, 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 thing that you can see a mile away and hear them two miles away? Bum, 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 bum. How does it end up running you over? Bum, 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 bum. How does that fucking happen? Now, civilians running down the road, they're not worried about the tank. Because they know the tank is on their side. In fact, they might even be running to it. 
food for thought. <laughs> so, um, she says they weren't trained. Another one then pipes in, oh, but we figured it out along the way. Um, so this is the, they, they're clearly talking about the uh, kibbutz situation. And of course there were three tanks. And here's the one saying, this is the money shot. <laughs> I asked, are there civilians there? And he said, I don't know, just shoot. Now, what some people won't tell you, and I will, because I watched this whole goddamn thing. She claimed that her next her next line was, whether she it was something she memorized or not, was that uh, I'm not going to fire the tank shells in there because those are Israeli buildings and civilians. So instead, she gave the order to open fire with the 50 cal, which, by the way, will blow right through the goddamn concrete block. Right through, right through the concrete block on this side. It'll, it'll go right through that concrete block, right through me, right through that drywall, right through the drywall on the other side, right through the fucking drywall on the other side, right through the fucking drywall on the other side, and right through the concrete block on the other side, depending on what kind of shell they use, what kind of fucking projectiles they use. Fitty cows are made to take out armored vehicles and personnel, but also armored vehicles. Um, nasty, nasty things. She, that was okay. That wasn't a bridge too far. But of course, as I promised, as I told you, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna first of all, do this so I don't get hit. See if I can find the commander, dude. And it's going to do this on me. You don't think in the moment, you're just saving lives. This is the part. Uh, the terrorists did not fight the tank. Once the tank arrived, they either ran or died. This is the guy, and this is the scene where he's talking about this. There's battle from the... There's also fire from the field. So we'll battle inside the hole, which is the, the, the kibbutz. And in the community, we fire projectiles and machine guns. So there's fire coming from the, the tree line as well as the community, the buildings. So we fire projectiles and machine guns, okay? I didn't make that part up. <laughs> this is the guy who praised the fact that there were uh, all these girl powers things going on, okay? Uh, so he's, he's contradicting what the other one said right before this which was uh, this one. Okay. She looks like she's, she should be like studying for the SATs. And somehow or another, these four uh, young women, girls, I'm not going to call them women. Um, I guess they're of legal age, but no, they're girls. These four young girls uh, supposedly were in charge of that which I believe was paid for by, uh, yeah, that's right, your tax dollars. Um, this is the story here. Uh, it's from the gray zone. I will link you to this and show it right here. That's the girl. Uh, big poster child. They, they found her body uh, in the kibbutz. It was, uh, it took a while to identify. Let's just put it that way. And uh, turns out, um, eyewitnesses uh, said that uh, Leo Hetzroni, Hetzro, Hetzroni, Leo Hetzroni, uh, was actually killed. Twelve-year-old girl in the kibbutz was actually killed by a tank, and not by, um, and not by a fucking idea, uh, uh, Hamas fighter. 
uh, was also fucking uh, reported by the Israeli paper Haratz. So um, there you have that. And there's links to all of that down below. Uh, there's a big diplomatic dash as the uh, end of the Israel-Gaza uh, truce looms. And there's an interesting article here, which I will again show you the original. Which, by the way, is something that I've talked about quite a bit. And that is this. And Norman Finkelstein wrote about this yesterday. Um, here's the truth. Uh, everyone knows, and they've come to understand, that we're going to clear Hamas out of fucking Gaza once and for all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Says Bibi Netanyahu. Um, again, the heyday of the blood is starting to... It's, it's, it's cooling to the point where it's almost room temperature in Israel. Um, you can't do that. And he makes a very good argument. He explains it. Uh, just like I said. You would literally have to kill every single, at least a million plus Palestinians. <laughs> because um, of the 2.3 million Palestinians living in Gaza before this thing happened, a bunch have, have left. Um, but the rest who remain, remain because they choose to. Because it is their home and they will defend it or they will fight for it or they will die in it. Hamas is not just a government that they elected. Hamas is a mindset. It is a resistance mindset. And these are people who have been fucking tormented most of their fucking lives. A lot of them, all their lives, by their oppressor. <coughs> and they are not about to roll over and accept many minimum minimum wage jobs living in an apartheid state like the West Bank. If they had wanted to do that, they could have left a long time ago, but they don't. So as Norman Finkelstein puts it correctly, you, you, you can't get rid of Hamas. Hamas, they couldn't, and he points this out, and this is he's accurate. They couldn't get rid of Hamas in the West Bank when the Israelis were after him and the Palestinians, Fatah and fucking the Palestinian Authority, those sellouts. And Hamas still thrives in the West Bank. I mean, goddamn. They tried to wipe them out in 2007 and have been doing everything they could sense to do that. How successful have they been? <coughs> As I said from the beginning, this thing is them saying that the idea is to wipe out Hamas and get Hamas out of fucking Palestine is foolish. Because they know they can't do that. Unless they start slaughtering everybody and most of the fucking youngsters leave, you're still going to have a million plus fucking Palestinians in, in, in Gaza. And you're going to have to kill a million plus fucking people in order to accomplish that fact, that feat. And they're not going to be allowed to do that. Not only will the fucking world say, that's it, you're done, like they've already done. But so too will the people in fucking Israel, like they're already saying. This is costing the people of Israel too fucking much. And ultimately, this is all about protecting Bibi Netanyahu and the Likudniks who were in power as well as the leadership at the IDF who gave the orders on October the 7th to disregard civilian casualties because they could be blamed on the Palestinians. Oh, 
You can make up as many fucking bullshit stories as you want. He can make up stories about fucking getting systemic rape orders and giving him Viagra. I shouldn't say that because I know the IDF watches my shit and they're like, oh, fuck, we didn't think about that. You can make up as many stories as you want about beheading babies, about stealing incubators. You can make up as many stories as you want. You can wrap the culprits in identity politics, girl power movement, and hope somehow or another that plot armor is enough. But in the end, in the end, the people who are responsible for the failure of protecting the fucking people of Israel, and then for killing the people of Israel. In the end, those people know, those men mostly in Israel, no. Their time is coming. <laughs> they will be demoted. They will be kicked out of the military. All of their perks, their, their multiple homes will be gone. <coughs> As do the Likud party members as does Bibi Netanyahu. Time is short for them because this thing is wrapping up. And short of a goddamn false flag terror attack, which they've done everything else, they might as well do one of those and see how that fucking works. Uh, anything else short of that is, this thing is almost done. And in all likelihood, that plan laid out by the big ones up top who talked to fucking Biden's people. Uh, he's, he's, by the way, there's an ex-World Health Organization official saying, uh, who's, who's spoken to Biden and who knows people inside on the inside, that says, Biden, there's no way he can run again. He's gotten to the point where he just, you watch him doing press conferences. <coughs> he's jacked up on so much fucking Adderall and he's still semi-comatose. Um, there's no way he can run again. So we're probably looking at Gavin Newsom taking his place. You know, they're not going to let there be a fucking. They're not going. We we don't we don't worry about even the image of fucking democracy in this country anymore. We don't even try to pretend it's a democracy anymore. Just let the fucking elites pick who they fucking want to work with, and that's it. So there's no way. Uh, a year from now, uh, there's no way Biden's running. There's there's absolutely no way. Unless he's just, unless it's fucking weekend at Bernie's and they got two fucking aides propping him up and they put sunglasses on his head and he just, this is how he answers him. Unless that's what they're going to do with him. Uh, well, I, 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 I tell you the truth, I wouldn't be surprised. It, it wouldn't shock me. It's, it's just become such a fucking shit show. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but keep an eye out for a terrorist attack. It, and of course, it would make as much sense as you know Assad and after Obama. After Obama says the red line is using chemical weapons on your own people, don't do that, Assad. Two days later, Assad uses chemical weapons on his own people. Wow, <laughs> what a stupid move that was. Um, I, and so now there's a ceasefire, and there's about to be uh, a complete overhaul and how the world deals with the situation between Israel and Palestine because the powers that be have dictated down to Biden's fucking secret crew, for some reason they're keeping them secret, who are actually making the decisions and writing his op-eds for the Washington Post, that, you know what, two states, get the fucking Israelis out of fucking the West Bank, no more blockade, and we're going to monitor them and make sure everybody's happy and it's going to be a peacekeeping thing between them for a while. But there's going to be free movement and we're going, to, we're going to go with that. How about that? Let's try that for a little while. Because the powers that be have taken the word of the king in fucking Saudi Arabia 
and the king in Jordan and the kings everywhere else in the Middle East who said, we're not going to open up your economic corridor through our fucking country if this continues one more fucking week. So, big business says that's it. That's it. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's today's news. I thank you guys for your time, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.